Is English football overrated? Do you think that, or is it just because we've kind of we have seen this little debate kind of pop up this week, haven't we? The coefficients has been a lot of talk about that. The German teams possibly taking that fifth spot. No, they've got it. Like no, no, they've got it. It's, likely, it's in yeah. the bag. Thank God. It's in the bag. You know, you know. fairly recently we were talking, weren't we? And I said that football's been going my way. Everything I want to happen on football yeah. pitches is happening for, throughout the leagues. And it happened again because Tottenham now are looking desperate to finish in the top four. But you know this conversation about is, is Premier League football perhaps overrated? We need to explore it. There's a lot to get into. There's an awful lot to discuss here. But my, my answer is no. Okay, we've, we're not doing very well this year. You know, Aston Villa aside, we're out. But that doesn't... That's this year. It's mm. a competition look, as well. Also, if you look over the past... Say you look over the past, what? Five years. You've had two All-English semi-finals. Uh, sorry, two All-English finals. Yep. Two All-English Champions League finals. Yep. We haven't not had an English team in a semi-final for God knows how long. All-English Europa League finals. All-English All English Europa League finals. I do think... And by the way... I don't take as much joy in this as some people would think that I would. I don't like the fact that... The English clubs can throw our weight around. We have the money. We can launch ourselves into Europe, splurge in our cash and ultimately create a league that is a super league. Mm. I don't like it and I don't like the way that it's happening. But I certainly do think that English football is still the <laughs> best league in Europe. I, I, I think it's a bit of a bubble. I think there has to be. You're talking about Arsenal spent hundreds of millions of pounds. They couldn't compete against Bayern Munich on, on a mental level. Man United have spent literally billions and couldn't get out of the group. Liverpool are in the Europa League is one of the biggest clubs in the world and they're in the Europa League to start off and then they lose as well. So I think that's just by definition, the amount of money that these English sides spend, you're not going to be able to compete with Bayern Munich every single every single season with Real Madrid as well. Anomaly, isn't it? Yes, people, what's going on? Apologies for interrupting your viewing, but listen to this. Super 6 are back and you can get involved. Download the Super 6 app. Links in the description below. Predict six scores and you could be the winner of £250,000. It's that easy. And if you're not involved yet, after us telling you all season to get involved, then what the hell are you doing? Download Super 6 now and get stuck in. This season is an anomaly. Okay, we're out this year. Yeah, it is. But last year we had an, last year we had an English winner. <laughs> we had an English winner of the Champions League. We had an English winner in West Ham of the Conference League. Um, the I, before... I don't see the quality. Do you see the quality with the money that... Man United, Chelsea, I think Spurs a... have spent. I mean, it's, uh, all I'm trying to say is I think there's a bit of a bubble in the Premier League with the money that we spend. What do you players. mean bubble? What it, does the bubble, the bubble signify? signify? The, the, the quality on show from the likes of Arsenal, from the likes of uh, Man United, Spurs, it costs a lot for those guys to compete within the Premier League to get to number one in the Premier League. When it, when it comes to face and size in Europe, it still doesn't actually I, make that much of a difference. I look at it a bit more in that. You know, when you look at a lot of the English teams, um, look, I think Manchester United flopped hard in the Champions League, so I kind of overlook us in that but we're kind of in this box as well you look at Newcastle you look at Arsenal not Man City you look at those teams and those teams are very inexperienced when it comes to Europe obviously Manchester United have a European history etc but the Newcastle team not many of them have been in a Champions League and I think that counts and I think you saw it between Arsenal and Bayern Munich mm. and to a certain extent at times you saw Real Madrid's experience and now showing in the games against Man City, against an experienced side that have just saw, won it. You saw and it with Newcastle in every game. You saw yeah. it with Newcastle when they played uh, Borussia Dortmund. Like you look yeah. at the two teams that are in the other semi, PSG and Dortmund. Hmm. Newcastle were better than both of those teams in various games this season. Hmm. They, they were, be they were the definitely camp. better than Paris Saint-Germain. They, they, they battered the razzle-dazzle Do you know what I mean? Paris but Saint then it comes yeah. down to in those knockout games, being able to navigate yourself through them, having do, the nows to do that. This yeah. is interesting, right? Do you think that there's anything in this? Is the fact that the Premier League is so tough, the Premier League is so relentless. You know, you look at Arsenal going away to Bayern Munich. They can't rest players. They've got no freedom. Every single game for Arsenal since basically the turn of the year has been a cup final. Manchester City, everything I've just said about Arsenal is completely applicable to Man City. Their opponents, it isn't quite like that. So the rigorous nature of the Premier League, the difficulty of winning the Premier League actually makes life very difficult in Europe because... Bayern Munich didn't win the league. they known that they weren't going to win the league for a long time. They could ease off in the league and focus on the Arsenal game. Arsenal had no such luxury. So he's actually the brilliance of the Premier League costing English sides That's in a good Europe. point. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah one I didn't expect to make. That. That came, came <laughs> that's that's, that's great. No, 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 a great point. I think there is a point though. I think when you're getting knocked out against Real Madrid or Bayern Munich, that can happen. And I don't really look on that and go... Well, that's a stain on English football. Of course it's not. You're lost against Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. 
But is there an argument that the Europa League teams like Brighton, like West Ham, you know, should they not be doing better given the resources they have? Well, they face a, a the generation fight, in. aren't they? Mm. By Leverkusen, general, they're, they're a once in a hundred years kind of team in yeah, German football. Uh, yeah, they could I, win a, a treble, invincible. That's a team though that Xabi Alonso, when he took over, they were in the relegation though. <laughs> Yeah, but you it's know, something like... It's, it's, it hasn't it's had huge amount spent that. on it and things like that. Yeah, and they were tight in the game. They, they could have easily won it in a couple of the legs, you know, one of the legs of the two. I Eng- mean, English um, sides should be... like You know when we talk about the, particularly that conference league, I, I think that whatever English side is in that conference league is, is almost always your favourite to win it. And that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. But when you think of the money in the Premier League. Think about the eyeballs on the Premier League. Think about the most iconic managers in world football. Where do they work? Think about the best players now. I think it's fair now to say, actually, the best players in the world, you know, for years, for, for decades. Apart from a couple. For decades, it was always La Liga. Yeah. What England had at times, England had the managers. So you go, the best players in the, in the world play in, play in, in Spain, mm. but the best managers were here at various points. The best managers were, were often here. But now the best managers are most certainly in the Premier League, but so are, so are the best players. If, if it, I can't really think of if you were to list. It was like Jude Bellingham, from, Vinicius Junior, yeah, apart from Harry Kane. You know, there's those Adrian. kind of players. You know, yeah, but when you, you go got, on mass, yeah, yeah. They're, on mass, I think mass. the large percentage. Let's say if you did the top hundred players in the world, hmm. the per- bigger percentage of them are probably in the Premier League, sixty-five. Yeah, yeah. but and there's it, still there's still a draw, I think, to go into Spain and go into La Liga, mm. and there's still a draw. But there, maybe there just the two be, clubs. <laughs> there will always be a draw with with Real Madrid. That will always be that will always be a, a thing. I think it's probably. Particularly if you're South American, particularly if you're Spanish, it's always going to be the allure of Real Madrid. I mean, I all feel it, mm. and I am not Iberian I love, or South American. Yeah, I feel it, so I, I get it. But I do think that I do. I do think that when we we're trying to we're trying to come up with an answer here, is English football overrated? Do we expect too much from English teams in what Europe? What do you expect? And I don't think we do. No, As we think, sit, should there be that, one side in the semi-finals every year? No. Yes. You can't That's guarantee what, yes. that. You can't guarantee it, but yeah, should, should there be? Like? You roughly g- guesstimate. Yeah, England should have a representative in the semis in the of every semis, competition. England should have a representative based on the money. Based on if, the money. If we're doing the Eredivisie podcast, then yeah. no. Based on but the outside money. of when you look at Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, how many English teams are actually better than them? One. Well, you include Barcelona quite lightly. I mean, they're rubbish. Yeah. They just lost the, the PSG. The, the, the holders from of a winning Liga. position. With some fantastic young players in their oh, team. No, Barcelona mm. rubbish, man. Honest to God, they're I rubbish. I don't think they're Ar- Arsenal, they are Arsenal rubbish. are better. They Arsenal are. Play, when you look at the pla- Arsenal player... Arsenal are better side than Barcelona right now. Arsenal are a better side than Barcelona. They're not, they're not a bigger club. They're not more likely to beat them. But if you just do a combined 11... But, that's, but isn't that based on us watching the Premier League? If you do the managers even... No, they're, they're rubbish, man. Like the managers in the Premier League. Think about the managers in the Premier League compared to the managers... Elsewhere, I think we're doing this video because of Arsenal's fa- failings. That's the reality. Man City use like, can use like that as well. No uh, ma- penalties. Anything can happen on penalties. Arsenal should have won that game at the Emirates. Should it have gone to penalties? Didn't need to go to penalties, did it? It went to penalties. We don't talk about I made a comment about Arsenal, and ultimately Arsenal at home should have won the game, and they bottled it against Bayern Munich, and they're they're meant to be a big club. We talk about Arsenal sometimes, like like the Leicester City, like they got like they got Robert Hoof at the back. There's some people commenting that Arsenal barely beat Porto. Yeah, and yeah they out by sport in and, and, had a very, and had a very easy group. Lost to loss. And had a very easy group. In the group. No, do, do you know what I do think is, is, is quite interesting? I know that this is just one example, but did anybody see a clip? In fact, I put it in our WhatsApp group. It was a clip of a German fan, a Bayern Munich fan, speaking. Was it a Real Madrid fan? Real Madrid fan. Yeah, I retweeted it. No, no, it was a Bayern Munich fan. It was a Bayern Munich fan speaking to... To Joel. To yeah. Joel Bayer yeah, 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 yeah. about Arsenal. Sorry, I've seen the Real Madrid... There's a Real Madrid fan doing similar as well. No, he was talking about, he's talking about Man City. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, was just, he was The guy clearly, the half and half, yeah? <laughs> yeah. He, that, that, man's, that, that Real Madrid fan was clearly yeah. just being... He was a wind-up. I think he was just being a wind-up, though. No, but the Man City fan was just being a wind-up, whereas I think the Bayern Munich fan was telling his truth. Yeah. He, he, Can I say what he wrong. said? Can I say the final line he said in the video? That's what I think you're talking about. He said, yeah. what is Arsenal? Yeah. He, he also said, said like, no, they, what, you're outside of England now. Guy, like, no, no, he's he's massive yeah. guy. He's clearly like a, you know, the, the line, his, his you know the line, and the, and all that. You know like, the line that, that, that I thought was big? The line that I thought was big from the Bayern Munich fan in that conversation, it was put to, it was put to him, Arsenal are a big club. Arsenal are a big club. And his answer was, in England. Yeah. Exactly. I've been saying it for years. They're a big club in London. 
They're a big club with the fashion, with their with their banana kits. They're a big club in that regard. It's similar to how Newcastle, the biggest club in Newcastle. It's now Arsenal are a bigger club than Newcastle, but Arsenal are a very London centric, culture heavy club. As an institution, the way they handled that Bayern Munich game, very very I think small club off. mentality. And uh, look, I, th- I think Arsenal are a big club, but when you like that guy said, when you copy to certain towns. You gotta know yourself. Yeah, mm. got, and if you're well, in they, Bayern Munich's backyard, or if you're in Real Madrid's backyard, know yourself. But you're think, Arsenal. They got you, smacked they, they'd about. Be very it was few, very, there'd be very few Arsenal fans in the world. Yeah, yeah and plus it was talking to Joel, bigger. who's massively deluded. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean. The guy's massively they, deluded. Probably, and, and, but I think Joel may genuinely believe that Arsenal are a bigger club than Bayern Munich. Arsenal fans are deluded, but that's not an Arsenal feeling. That's a there's something Joel weird. Feeling. No, it's a, but, uh, yeah, he's an Arsenal fan. He represents. He no, represents he does that. It doesn't. It's his little fans are all the same. Bubbles, They're mental. No, 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 bubble. no. Ian Wright doing ad- no, advertising and billboards and stuff I, like that. I, I have far more exposure to Arsenal fans than I wish I did <laughs> because of where I grew up, because of being from North London. Uh, that isn't representative of who they are. Like it isn't. They're not. They're not that. There is. There is that, and yeah. it certainly exists online. I think they're big clubbers. They are. I, I, when I, yeah, of course they are. No, they are. They're the biggest club. They're the biggest club in London. They on one metric they are. It depends on where you. They've got more fans. They've definitely yeah. got more fans. Yeah. But but I think if you were to ask that, that Bayern Munich European fan, you know that Bayern weight. Munich fan that we're using as a case study. If you were to ask him, who's the biggest club in London? I think he'd say Chelsea. Yeah, because they're because we went there and won. And yeah. yeah. I think Chelsea are. There is a metric yeah, to, to cool. when you when his you memories score, of Arsenal are ten two. Yeah, and his, me- <laughs> and his memories of Chelsea are giving him the worst day of his life, yeah, making yeah, Bastian yeah. Schweinsteiger cry in his own That's backyard. Literally, is yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so look, and also before that, you know what I mean? We knocked him out. Of, we knocked him out of the Champions League in 05. Mm. No, no, no. So, yeah. so I think uh, when you when you judge the biggest club in London, there is definitely a metric to make it Arsenal. Definitely, and in my experience, it is Arsenal. I think but all I also, the metrics except the European Cups. Yeah, but that's a fairly significant one. It's a fairly, um, it's a, it's a fairly significant one. No, because as silverware. a City fan, not, I can't say no, no, City it's, are bigger it's than not just you. It's not just European Cups. It's, it's silverware over the past 25 years. They haven't won a league for two decades. Do you know how many league titles they've got? They haven't won a league for two decades. It's all very... You know me, I want to... I wanna, no, if no, there's an Arsenal I, fan, I, probably, listen, I wouldn't even bring up these I'm, arguments. I'm giving but. you my, my, my honest opinion on this. In my life, in yeah. my experience... Arsenal were a far bigger club than Chelsea. Yeah. So my life, life, said, ha- having only changing. two Champions League semi-finals in history mm. isn't a great achievement. Eric Dyer's got the same amount of appearances in Champions League semi-final history than Arsenal. 